How, from your experience, do we get things back to how they were? I think Manchester United had different principles than, than most of the other clubs. I would really like football to be where money was not always going to be the key. To have a consistency about your team is you need to have a team. I think the biggest problem for Manchester United is Manchester City. You managed to Everton, you went to Manchester United, it didn't go well. In that period after, even though you were at the very top of the game, did you doubt yourself in the post Manchester United? Uh, by my pause might make you think yes, but I didn't doubt that I was actually, I felt that I could do do the job. I could be good at it. I felt as if I could, uh, I my work on the grass was, was good enough to, for where I had been, I had success the years before. So I was always trying to say, it didn't go quite well this 10 months. Why did it not go well? Was it how I managed? Was it how I coached? Was it maybe I didn't have the right players? I had to try and look to see what there is. But the other part of the 10 or 11 years, I'd seen some great players. I had been in FA Cup finals. I'd, I'd got to quarterfinals of European competition with Everton. We'd, we'd qualify for the Champions League one year. So I was thinking as well, was I going to make, say that was all no good then, the, the years we had done it. So I think once I put it in perspective, then I says, no, I'm not, I'm not doubting it. But what I do think is, I think, I think most days you have to get up and be ready to sort of challenge yourself every day. I don't, I don't think you can get out of bed every morning and think, hey, this is fine. You know, I'm, I'm doing okay here. I think every day you're sort of getting up and saying, is, you know, how am I going to try and be better? How can I make people better? What am I, how can I make a difference today with what I've got? Paranoid almost. Yeah, near enough, near enough to an extent where you're saying, is, you know, I can't, you know, you folk, folks say, do you bring your work home? I, I really think if you're in, if you're in the, the boss, if you're the boss, you're always bringing your work home because it's not, you're not just taking, putting your head off and saying, I'm leaving that in the office and I'll pick it up in the morning. I think very rarely you're doing that. I think that's just life if you're, if you're a CEO or a boss. I very much agree. I very much agree with that idea of taking the work home. And also when things don't go wrong, in hindsight, everybody's quick to diagnose why it didn't go wrong. Um, has the subsequent 10 years where everyone has failed at Manchester United <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> felt good? <laughs> Because everyone has failed. Jose's failed. Yeah. Van Hal went there. Yeah. You went there. Um, I'm missing someone. I think I'm missing someone. I mean, Carrick well, had a stint. Ollie was in it. Ollie, as well, yeah. Ollie know, was in. Those, he failed as yeah. well. So that's you know five or six great yeah. great managers who who couldn't make it work at Manchester United for whatever reason. So I mm. think time has almost been good yeah. to you in terms of your, your yeah. the, the story of your I, time. I, there. Look, I'm, I'm, I I I get huge respect for uh, Josie Mourinho. Huge respect for Louis Van Gaal. You know, Ollie was new and is one of one of Manchester United's own, so was always going to be given every opportunity to try and make it work as well. So, I think that I think there's been some great managers going into Manchester United. I think the biggest problem for Manchester United is Manchester City. How do we? F I'm a Manchester United fan, season ticket holder. How, from your experience, do we get things back to how they were? I think you'll need to probably get rid of Pep somehow from my city. <laughs> I think that's my, that's my way. I look at it, I think, I think Pep is, I think there is some managers, I think. But you must have an unbelievable perspective, better than me at like what, because you knew Fergie, you knew the club, everything, mm. you've been inside it. What, what do we need to do to get back to? I think Manchester United had different principles than, than most of the other clubs. Looked at their youth a lot. Uh, didn't always sign maybe the, as I said before, maybe the the, the top yeah. diamond. God. Always sort of picked and picked out good players who improved. And now and again went and bought a Cantona every so yeah. often or uh, Van Nistelrooy or, or Van Persie Van at Persie. different times. You know, uh, so at different times they, they bought really good players at good times. This is actually a really good point because we've also bought some world-class players, players and they've all failed. <laughs> yeah, so there is, a, there is something about Manchester United they had their own way, but because of the competition which came in from Manchester City, uh, Chelsea probably more in the, in the earlier years, I think, those two clubs, I think, I think Liverpool have, have had a, an incredible peer and got a really good manager as well and top players. Every, I think over the year, Man United and Liverpool have always had a, a, a level of competition against each other. People say we've not spent money in terms of players. We spent shitloads of money. We spent almost a billion yeah, huge, or, or whatever. Huge. And all these players, the, I remember the Falcao's, the Di Maria, because yeah. I get excited every time and I yeah. celebrate and I start, 
you know, yeah, blowing up yeah. my friends' WhatsApp chats yeah, and saying, yeah, you're, you're screwed, yeah. we're going to win the league. Yeah. And then every year the, the player fails and then the yeah. manager's sacked. Yeah. So it feels like a bit of a... Is a, the expectation a uh, or the excitement on the new players coming in? I, I get this all the time and I say this quite a lot to people I, I hear in media, you know, they're talking about, oh, you need to buy new players. No, we buy new players. And I say, I, I, I would really like football to be where money was not always going to be the key to it. You know, we think the more players you, or the more money you spend uh, means that you win the league or you're successful. And look, I think it probably will prove that it is. But I'd rather see that, you know, sometimes that it's not that way. And I just do think that quite often, you know, not buying all the top players, it doesn't mean that you have to buy the top players. I think it's buying good players and people who've got good characters and people who are going to, going to work hard for the team. And then, and then they come into that culture. Which yes. makes one makes, which makes yeah, which makes the difference. Anyway, one plus one equal three, like Leicester that year. Yeah, Leicester and the the year they had was was probably what we're all hoping for. Whether it be us and you know, you've seen other clubs. I mean, actually, Newcastle United, for example, Newcastle United bought a couple of, uh, with respect, three or four English players last January, British mm -hmm. players, uh, probably not necessarily on the radar of the biggest clubs in the country. And, it, and, and they've turned round and they've had a great, they've had an incredible momentum from probably January last year, maybe just before January, and are keeping that momentum going. And now they're bringing in, they're adding in the odd bigger star or the bigger player as they go along. But I thought their business at the start was very good. If I'm one of your players in your dressing room, to, to be a David Moyes player at West Ham, and mm -hmm. what would, from a character and a personality standpoint, your expectation be of me? So that I fit into the culture and I'm successful. Uh, I'd I'd want you to be, I'd want you to be hard working. Mm -hmm. I want you to be honest in your endeavour. Mm -hmm. I no, I'd I'd want you to do your jobs whatever you want. I want you to be a team player. Individuals are are really important and, and no more hugely important. We've just seen in the World Cup individuals, but but I I, I do think that I I, I think. To have a consistency about your team is you need to have a team. I think if you've got individuals, you might get inconsistency, but you might get some really good days and we get clubs who can afford to carry one or two individual players who go along. But I think while you're trying to build, build, I think you have to start with a really solid base, good foundation, and then from that point, you try and grow. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.